everybody, and welcome to Inside Stuff. Now, before the season started, fans of the Denver Nuggets didn't have a lot to cheer about. The last time the Nuggets made the playoffs was back in 1995. But things have changed for the better. Denver is one of the biggest success stories of the year. And over the next few weeks, we will show you how they turn the entire team around. Today, we'll go on a behind-the-scenes journey back to training camp. Competition was fierce as Nuggets management tried to reshape the team into a contender. For more, let's go out to Summer Sanders in Denver. Thanks, Ahmad. One of the new additions to Nuggets camp was John Barry, a 12-year veteran who knows how to come in and energize a team. John is now playing for his seventh NBA franchise. The move to Denver challenged his aching body and travel-worn family, but it gave him the opportunity to help a group of young players learn how to win. We'll introduce you to John later in the show, but now we join head coach Jeff Buzdelic, a man responsible for giving the Nuggets a new identity. Now, if you guys really, truly want to win like you say you do, like you say you do, then you're going to hit open men, you're going to take care of the basketball, you're going to do what you're supposed to do, you're going to listen. Last season, the Denver Nuggets were tied for the worst record in the NBA. So this year's training camp loomed as one of the most important in franchise history as the rebuilding Nuggets look to climb back to respectability. Eric, push! I got it! Go, 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 go! It was a very, very young basketball team. Very inexperienced a team that went into every game with absolutely very little chance, if no chance, to win. Well, everybody walk so you can see this. But now, you know, we need to be the most improved team in the league the for a variety of reasons. Number one, all of our futures. <laughs> Don't get in the habit of slicing in here because what happens is if I'm defending you, all right, come on, I'm defending you. Now, now, now all of a sudden, look at where, look at where you're catching the ball. Every year at this time, I'm excited. You know, these are kind of the modern-day gladiators, somebody who's going out and fighting for their lives. And, and some of these guys are fighting for their the, uh, literal life. I mean, they're, they're, they're going out there trying to earn a living. Otherwise, it's zero. Go, go, go. The pressure is on one of our players because he's trying to make this team. He's trying to beat somebody out. I think that applies to all of us. How do you deal when the pressure's on? Go hard. Go hard. It's all based on results. <laughs> Last year, we didn't have very good results. But the bottom line is we have to win. This is the NBA. This league is for men, for men only, men only. A coaching lifer, Jeff Bezdelic, spent 12 years as an NBA assistant, including six in Miami, before finally getting his chance with the Nuggets last season. We're going to do this every day. It'll become habit for you. I think it's just a... Uh, culmination of uh, many years of experience under a lot of different really good coaches. I'm not going to tolerate not running back on defense either. Someone steals the basketball, you get your butt back there. And I would think it's all spearheaded by, you know, Pat Riley. I, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for Pat. And I've been able to uh, learn from him a great deal. Big guys always stay on top of their man. Close out. Hit him with a freaking bow. Hit him. Hit him. I'll run that back. What kind of what denial here, defense Jeff? is that? Where, where were you then? And what's that? I want very badly to be successful, very badly to win. And if it doesn't happen right away, you know what? I'll just keep working. We're in a little bit of a three quarter right here. And Bazdelic knew that his own fortunes were riding on the shoulders of the team's prized rookie, Carmelo Anthony. The third overall pick in the draft, Carmelo led Syracuse to a national championship as a freshman. Now at age 19, he had a new life in the spotlight, and it had given him a brand new perspective. When I get out the elevator, I just look out the windows out there in the living room. I was looking over the city. I think I got the, the best view that anybody can have. I can look at to the Pepsi Arena right here, the Pepsi Center, where we play at, practice at, straight over. People respect me as a player or, or, or as a person. And for them to say that I'm the savior of Denver, of not just the Nuggets, of the, the whole town. The next generation, right here, goes the Nuggets. Every basketball player, in this league, got their own story. 
with me, I'm just going to go out there and give whatever I got to do my all. Um, so that's just the way I was growing up. I tried to, I strive for the best, trying to do everything I can when I got to do it. NBA Inside Stuff on ABC is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? And Nike.com. Hey, action all week long on ESPN, TNT, and NBA TV. On Wednesday, Shaq and the Lakers take on Yao Ming and the Rockets. And Thursday, Rasheed Wallace makes his return to Portland when the Pistons take on the Blazers. Check your local listings. Welcome back to Inside Stuff. One of the keys to the transformation of the Nuggets was turning the team into a running team. This style is a combination of attitude and altitude, as Denver Brass had visions of a young, up-tempo team running opponents into submission at 5,000 feet. But in order to run in the Mile High City, you have to be in shape yourself. For more, let's go back out to summer in Denver. Thanks, Ahmad. It helped that the Nuggets brought in John Barry, a player known around the NBA for his hustle and tireless style of play. But even he gets tired, tired of dealing with injuries and uprooting his family to follow his hectic NBA career. Now we'll catch up with John and his teammates, who spent most of training camp right here on this court, painfully working themselves into shape. For players fighting for a roster spot, training camp becomes a test not only of their talent, but also their will. you, you got to be able to think you can do it and believe in yourself. You can't go into a game situation or a camp situation and say, I hope I make it. You're, you should be saying, I am going to make it, and this is how I'm going to do it. As the grueling two-a-day practices came to an end, the team's conditioning had become a growing concern for the coaches. Obviously, some of you guys aren't in shape. Now, I've got... Some of my staff telling, telling me that, you know, hey, we're in good condition. And then I watch this crap, and I, I say, no, we're not in good shape. Go, Nene! Come on, Nene! Two more, you can do it! You're going to say, look, we want a run and gun team. You're going to make sure that every single guy can do that. So all the guys that I work with that are on the bubble, I'll tell them straight up, if you don't do this, I guarantee you, Listen very carefully. What you're doing is very hard to do. Very hard to discipline yourself to run. Come on, Carmelo, push it. Push Carmelo. That's the way to run. That's the way to run, Carmelo. Get yourself in shape here. But newcomer John Barry hadn't had a chance to be a part of the team's practices. He was still trying to make it back after suffering a neck injury. How you feeling there, John? Oh, that's good, man. Right? Ready to get cleared. Yeah. I gotta still think that I gotta go out and get this job. I've been given a guaranteed contract, but you know, I wanna play. Barry had reason to feel anxious. He's had to move his family to seven NBA cities and was hoping he could play well enough to make Denver his final stop. This was my favorite part of the day, coming up and picking up Tyler, bringing Eli up and seeing him run off the bus and he runs up and give you a hug. It's great. Tyler! Come here, Whoa! Oh, man. What's up? Hi. How was school? Good. Have a good day? We always rent, and when we went to Sacramento, we bought a house, and um, we got traded. So we don't buy anymore, we rent. All right, good job. And after we got done unpacking here, Betsy just said, I don't want to do this again. It's just not fair to them to move them, move them around. You know, Tyler had started kindergarten in Atlanta before we left. So he went to kindergarten for three weeks, and then we just pick him up and leave. I want him to have a stable home and know where he's going to be. As they prepared to open the preseason, the Nuggets were eager to showcase their new running game. A lot of people excited about you guys here in Denver. They're up. I mean, this is like a new, new era right here, OK? This is your team, and put your best foot forward tonight. As the preseason game against the Phoenix Suns came down to the final seconds, it would fall into the hands of one of the players fighting to make the roster. With Denver needing a clutch shot, this would be the perfect chance for Eric Washington to prove himself under pressure, and he would seize the moment. With about seven seconds to go, you got the ball right here. You come up and set a quick pick and roll, all right? We got Eric, okay, look for a drive and kick. Debussy drives to his right, dishes in the corner. Here's the shot from the corner that's good by Washington. Oh, great execution there. 
Final score in this NBA preseason tilt, Denver 106, Phoenix Suns 100. Where to hit that shot. Nice. Did a great job. I think you and I both know that this conversation was going to take place, and although um, we knew it would take place, I, it, it's always difficult. And, you know, we're going to release you. Um, Eric, um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your effort and your professionalism. You're always welcome in our gym. Um, we will try and help you any way we can. You've been the ultimate pro and a great example for everyone, and I appreciate everything. You'll always be a Denver Nugget as far as we're concerned. Okay? All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, good luck, and let us know how we can help. All right. All right? Thanks. Okay. You know, the team's got to look out for, you know, whatever they think their best interests are. As long as I made a, a good impression, I did everything they asked me to. You know, it was just unfortunate that, you know, I was just in a situation where it's just overloaded with guards already. So I'll see what options I have overseas and see what's in the developmental league or CBA or something like that. Getting cut by the Nuggets was especially tough for Eric Washington because he's had ties with the team since he was a rookie. Back in 1997, Eric averaged nearly eight points in the 66 games he played for Denver. Stay with us, because coming up, the Nuggets gear up for a new adventure, their first preseason road trip. This will be a test of our will against their will. Play our game. Our game. And I'm glad we're playing five straight road games here, or six, whatever it is. I want to run these guys right out of this building. Inside step. Earlier in the show, we told you that last year's Denver Nuggets won only 17 games. What we didn't tell you is that they won only four of those games on the road. Even though the talent level of this year's team is much improved, they were still young, inexperienced, and far from road tested. That is, until they packed up for the first preseason trip. Now, I'll tell you what. Being on the road for this length of time and playing as many road games as we are is going to toughen us up. It's going to toughen us up. It's better than just playing at home and, you know, winning a bunch of home games. And you get comfortable and soft. This will get us going. The Rooks got to go get us full for the playing. They know they do this. I do what? I'm going to put the order in. What order? I'm going to put the order for everybody to eat food on the plane. You got to pick it up. Hey, hey Coach Knight, we got some defined rookies, Coach. Francisco, you going to go pick it up for real? We're going to have a meeting. No, I'm going to put the order in. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to put it on the name, Chris Marcus, and just pick it up, like, right when you, before you go to the airport. Are they going to fight it. They're going to keep fighting it, but we're going to keep fighting them back. There's too many of us. Too many years. Nah, man. What do you mean, nah? You have to. It's no... Nine days. Still can't believe it. On Indiana right now, then to Toronto, then Syracuse and Portland back to back. I don't know who scheduled that. The first stop was Indiana, where Jeff Trepanier, a holdover from last season, was clinging to his hopes of making the team again. Yeah, it is day by day. I mean, if you have a bad practice and the, the coaches get on you and everything like that, and you're practicing bad, I mean, they, they take looks at that. How about our post of basketball? Run the ball. Run your through and post up sometimes. Look for that, all right? One, two, three. Right, let's go. Rookie star Carmelo Anthony got the Nuggets rolling early in the game. Boy, well, that was impressive. Meanwhile, Trepanier tried to make a good impression of his own, but at halftime, he felt the wrath of his coach. Trepanier, you played nine minutes. You're a great athlete, no defensive boards. Rodney, eight minutes, no defensive boards. Skeeter, seven minutes, no defensive boards. I mean, that's zero, zero, zero. That's bull crap. That's bull crap. You get in there and you grab a rebound. Though Trepanier never did get a rebound, he contributed to the victory as Denver ran its preseason record to 3-0. But the Nuggets would lose their next two games in Toronto and Syracuse and then had to brace themselves for a cross-country plane ride. We're heading to Portland. Did you look at the map? Yeah, Portland's a little ways away. There's no more bags and no more players. I think we're ready to go. Portland, Oregon. Three time zones from Syracuse, New York. 
all the way to Portland. And I told our players, get used to it. This is the NBA. No one's going to feel sorry for you. Let's go. Move. 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 Good. 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 Awesome. We have some tough decisions coming up, so it's important to get a look at guys under duress. Watch right there. Watch right there. Right there. I think they feel the pressure, but that's the basketball business in the NBA. For Trapanye, this was one of the final opportunities to prove his value to the team, and he made the most of it. Good job, Jeff. Good job, buddy. Denver feeling pretty good about itself. They're now 4-2 and two as they pick up the overtime victory here at the Rose Garden in Portland. You know, hey, you're down 16, <laughs> came across the country, three games, four nights, you competed, gutty effort. Good job, Jeff. That was a hell of a job, really. Just got to keep working. I believe it when I'm here the day after <laughs> cuts. NBA Inside Stuff on ABC is brought to you by America's Dairy Farmers and Milk Processors and Spalding Infusion, always ready to pour. So the last three years, I've been taking one class at a time, I'm trying to keep up in class in case, in case they fire me, I won't have wasted the semester. For every team in the NBA, preseason ends exactly the same way. Management has to make the difficult decision of which players will make the final cut and which will go home. For the Nuggets, that decision was especially tough because several players on the bubble were hoping to reap the rewards of sticking it out through last year's dismal season. Lives, careers, and futures hung in the balance as the due date for the final rosters drew near. We're going to need to make some cuts today. This is a hard day because probably after today we'll have, we won't have a couple guys on our team that we're all very fond of. You know, one of the worst days um, I have every single year is when I have to sit and tell players, hey, you didn't make the team. This year, as, as we talked to all the, all the players about, hey, listen, this is about winning, and sometimes you have to make hard decisions. He has to face his wife and kids and say, it didn't work, and, you know, we're back, and, and I've got to look for a job now, and it's the, the dream, at least for this day, is over. Uh, every camp brings it out of five or eight or ten extra guys that are just desperately trying to make a team. Some guys that have been trying to make a team for years on end, you know, you see guys' dreams and hopes getting dashed. It's brutal. Junior Harrington, a starter last season, was now on the fringe along with another of last year's guards, Vincent Yarborough. Both were awaiting the final word on their status. Junior, it's Marnie. Give me a call back when you get this message. Bye. Monday at 3.35, and we've got 10 minutes, basically, to turn in our uh, final roster. And we're going to make two cuts today. Vincent, Marnie. Hey, Kiki wants to talk to you. Just so we make it official, we're going we're gonna to wave uh, Junior Harrington and Vincent Yarbrough. This is the hardest day of the whole season, especially when you have to make cuts uh, with guys you've, you've grown very attached to. OK, so I'm sending the waiver request. OK, there it goes. It's gone. How do you go from being a starter last year to being unemployed? That's like the business like at its peak. I fell for them. It was very difficult because I think that the both of them were put in situations where they, it was really impossible. Most experts thought we'd win eight, nine games, and yet these young men helped us win 17 games and played very competitively. This morning, I was pulling up, and uh, I saw Junior in the parking lot, and Junior told me, uh, it's tough because, you know, those, those are my two boys. We hung out a lot. We went to the malls, you know, hung out at each, at each other's houses, went out to eat and things like that. Got to find some new buddies now. Great stuff. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. You can't go back and change it. You can't make the coach's decisions for him. So it is what it is. We got to move on. I can't, can't dwell on that. It didn't work here in Denver. That's the end of my life. No way. Mark, I just want to tell you that uh, Mark Pope's going to make our team. Oh, that's, that's tremendous. Um... <laughs> When I heard you were on the phone, I, I uh, got a little bit of that pit in my stomach, thinking, oh, my goodness. 
That's great, Kiki. All right. Thank Glad you. to have you aboard. Thank you. Really happy. Hey, uh, can I ask you about, and obviously I know there's no guarantees, but is it a situation where I should, can I bring the family out? What, keep it all maybe? packed? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can I get another bag here? Or? I would get another bag. Okay. Hey, guess what? We made the team. Did you know that? So that means that you and Mommy and Baby Adrian are going to come here to Colorado. Now with the roster finally in place, the Nuggets were ready to put the long days of training camp behind them and start looking ahead to opening night. It's up to you. I mean, the way we're going to be successful, and I'll tell you what, you know, I won't say it publicly, but I feel real good about who we are and where we're going. And I'm pretty quiet about it because I just want to kick some butt. And San Antonio is your first challenge, and I think it's a great first challenge. I mean, what better way to make a splash than to knock off the world champs? Even though Junior Harrington and Vincent Yarborough were cut by the Nuggets, both of them are playing basketball this season. Harrington is on one of the best teams in the Ukraine, while Yarborough is playing on a team in Italy. That is it from Denver. Now let's head back to Ahmad. All right, that just about does it for today's show. Be sure to tune in next week when we continue our all-access look at the Denver Nuggets. We'll profile two major additions to the team. Point guard Andre Miller, the quiet and confident leader, and his backup 5'5", five five Earl Boykins, who's been disproving doubters his entire career. Plus, we'll see what happens when the young Nuggets encounter their first losing streak. We'll see you next week with more Inside Stuff.